Hello and welcome to the Texas Triffid Ranch, Dallas's pretty much only carnivorous plant gallery. If you haven't been to the website in a little while, you might have missed out on the uh, series of articles on uh, January cleanup. Going ahead and cleaning up your carnivorous plants uh, because, well, you've got nothing else going on. And uh, one of the little side aspects here is going ahead and cleaning up Saracenia pitcher plants. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, Saracenia is a uh, genus of carnivorous plant that runs along the Gulf Coast of North America. Uh, most of the species are found in uh, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and Florida, with one spe well, with two species, uh, Saracenia purpurea and uh, Saracenia rosea, that run far north. In fact, the purple pitcher plant, Saracenia uh, purpurea, is uh, the uh, flower emblem, the Canadian equivalent of a state flower for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. That gives you an idea on how far they range. Anyway, these are all hybrid uh, Saracenia of varieties from the Gulf Coast, and uh, we're catching them here in January, where uh, they've pretty much died back for the year. That's exactly what happens with Saracenias, that uh, starting, uh, let's see, around here at about the uh, end of October to beginning of November, they start to go dormant. They, uh, they die back, they uh, stop growing, and they pretty much spend their time catching as much energy as they possibly can in preparation for spring. Then around uh, the uh, middle to end of March, they'll start blooming. And then after they're in the process of blooming, they'll start producing new traps, which is usually uh, end of April to beginning of May here in the Dallas area. The old traps here, so long as they're uh, still green, will still photosynthesize. But there are so, you end up with ones that get damaged in uh, rainstorms, well, in some cases, snowstorms even. Uh, you'll end up with ones that uh, animals will tromp on uh, when they, uh, later on in the season, all you need is a bird to go ahead and land on some of them, and it's enough to go ahead and uh, bust them, and they'll fall over. And so in this case, all of these were clipped free and uh, brought over here. Now, uh, what we're going to do here today is demonstrate that uh, if you've got nothing else going on in January, you've got a supply of Saracenia pitchers that you're uh, needing to trim back anyway, whether it's your plant or somebody else's, and you want to go ahead and have a little bit of fun with the kids and or yourself, uh, you can go ahead and have the next best thing to uh, picking the, apart an owl pellet, which is trying to see what exactly your, the Saracenia in your area has been capturing for prey. Now, if you take a look at this center picture here, you'll notice that there's a nice hole here in the side. In fact, with these others, other two here, you'll see these spots here. This is something that I've been calling bee burn. It's where you end up with enough insects that are building up on the inside that they can't digest. So this is effectively plant indigestion here, that uh, it, especially later on in the season, end of October, we tend to get a lot of insects running around, especially bigger ones like wasps, bees, uh, large flies. They'll get caught in the trap. And the problem is, is the plants simply can't digest them quickly enough. This last October was incredibly dry, even by Dallas standards. We were getting down to as little as uh, 8 to 10% humidity every day. So we were having plenty of problems with uh, trying to keep them uh, sufficiently moist. And in the wild, and in captivity, the Saracenia will go ahead and draw water up the uh, column here to go ahead and uh, drown insects and uh, allow bacterial action to digest them. And then digestive glands all along the inside of the pitcher will go ahead and absorb the nutrients. Well, if the plant can't pull enough moisture in because it's too dry, the bugs will go ahead and collect here. And like I said, they'll go ahead and they'll rot. So, that's the bad side of it. The good side is, is that this, since these had to come off anyway, this gives a great opportunity to be able to cut through, go ahead and take a nice handy uh, pair of scissors like this, and, or shears like this, and go ahead and actually cut open the, uh, and open the picture. We'll start off here by going ahead and focusing on this one. You'll already notice here that you can already see on the outside, we've got all sorts of little parts. And so, well, I'm going to do here, if I can do this, is go ahead and cut open the trap. That's what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip it right here. And that way we can get in. And you can already see uh, some of the uh, debris is already falling, or some of the contents are already falling out. But what we do is 
scatter this down over here. And then cut over here. And see, it's just like taking apart an owl pellet, only much less owl vomit. Anyway, as you can see in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring this around so you can get a better look. As you can see, you can actually go ahead and tell by the parts here what kind of prey is in here. Now, most of the time, this is going to be uh, insect parts. We've got at least one moth over here. Now, with one species, uh, Saracenia leucophila, it has a real issue with uh, going ahead and catching lots and lots of wasps. That uh, They'll also go ahead and catch a lot of moths. Uh, if you've seen any of the other YouTube videos here, you'll see the videos of the uh, of uh, Saracenia under a full moon. They have a tendency to fluoresce a bit <coughs> above and beyond uh, the normal uh, UV fluorescence that uh, Saracenia will have along the lip of the pitcher. And uh, in this case, that's enough that uh, uh, with a full moon or at least a bright moon, it'll go ahead and draw in lots of moths. So we've got moth parts in here. We also have, let's see, like for instance, right over here, we've got what's left of a, it looks like what's left of a wasp head. You'll end up, let's see, it, sometimes it'll take a little while to go ahead and go through and figure out exactly what's in here. But for the most part, it's going to be uh, insect pieces. Uh, again, bees, wasps, ants, click beetles are a big one that uh, leucophilias have a tendency to capture. In fact, it actually gets to be kind of creepy when you hear them in the trap and they're not dead yet. And it's just this thump, thump, thump sound. So uh, you'll end up uh, getting click beetle shells in here. And occasionally, very occasionally, you might even find bones in here. Doesn't happen all that often. Occasionally, you'll end up with uh, Mediterranean geckos in this area, baby anoles that'll uh, get into the pitchers. They'll die for whatever reason. Usually, they aren't trapped. They end up dying of natural causes, and you can find bones in here. But that's, again, that's rather rare. The main thing here is that we can go ahead and we can cut these apart. And since this is not going to be any kind of scientific survey, this is just purely demonstrating, hey, take a look at this. In fact, you can get a view of what the pitcher plant or what the uh, insects in here see. That if you'll notice here on the underside, the underside of the trap is, uh, or the underside of the lid on the pitcher is rather light. So insects that try to fly out, if they're up close, they'll end up bumping into here and then fall in further. Now, also the shape of the pitcher is such that insects that try to fly out on their own usually get sucked down further, and that's how they end up getting caught. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut here to start off with, and go ahead and show you. Yeah, see, this is all nice, nice, nice bug stuff here. Hold on here, give me a second, let me highlight this. This is all stuff that's gonna be broken down a little bit further. It's usually been broken down by bacterial action. You do get some insect larvae that will go ahead and grow in here, or live in here, and we'll go ahead and augment this. You also have in the higher portions of the pitcher, you'll end up with in the wild, tree frogs and lizards that will live on top of the uh, pitcher and we'll go ahead and effectively pre-digest prey for, uh, for the plant. Now this one here is pretty fresh. Among other things, I brought this in. It had fallen over and had filled full of water from a, a rainstorm that came through the Dallas area here this weekend. So, get a chance to go ahead and see all this stuff very fresh. But even then, we have uh, we have a lace wing caught in here, up here on the top right. Let me go ahead and see if I can clip this further so you can get a better look. Yeah, we've got at least one lace wing that was caught in here. And we've got a lot more uh, general insect parts. Looks like quite a few ants in here. And if you wanted to go ahead and take the time with one of these, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't go sifting through and keep yourself occupied by seeing exactly what has my pitcher plant been catching here as of late. If it's not catching anything at all, obviously, that ultimately leads to issues. 
if it's catching too much, you end up with the bee burn that you've seen here. Or if you're living in a really humid area, you end up with the pitchers filling so full of uh, dead prey that the uh, that uh, new prey that falls in is able to go ahead and escape. But that's the reason why the uh, pitcher plant goes ahead and produces more pitchers. And then as you can see there, that little bit there, the, uh, the little earwig going ahead and growing or climbing out of there because you end up with lots of scavengers that will come on in and take advantage of this. And again, it doesn't hurt the plant in any way. It's, in fact, it's actually helping the plant because they're there to go ahead and break these big chunks of meat down into smaller components that the plant can actually uh, absorb and use to grow. So anyway, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for going ahead and indulging me on this. Uh, I'd love to go ahead and hear your own results with whatever prey you've been capturing. And uh, please feel free to go ahead and check out the website, uh, texastriffidranch.com, and happy trails.